Greetings, YouTubers, and welcome to my 28th TTM video. Today, I will show you two purchases that I finally got in the mail and five TTMs. So the mail came in somewhat today. I haven't seen any mail in a while. I don't know if the postman hates me. I know they get scared at the post office when I come in with those packages and stuff. I have a lot to mail out occasionally. Just before we start off, I want to give a shout-out to... Bees Cards 01. B apostrophe S there. Wrote it down. He's just getting started out and uh, looking for some subscribers. So go check his channel out. I did and subscribed. I like what I saw there. And you might too. Give him a chance. I like try to share everything, you know, and get everybody to uh, look at everybody's channels because it's all about fun. You know, that's what I'm trying to have. And also a shout out to Mets Rule. Congratulations, buddy. He had a hundred subscribers, so congratulations join the Century Club. You don't get a jacket or anything, but it'd be nice if they gave out gold jackets, but all right, let's get started. First of two purchases, my Hall of Fame football cards that I see. Postcards are coming in. This one is of a legendary offensive lineman, a guard passed away in 2008 at the age of 63, and that is Mr. Eugene Josiah Upshaw Jr., Gene Upshaw, born in 1945 in Robstown, Texas. He attended Texas A&I, which is now known as Texas A&M Kingsville. Another famous player to go to that school went to the Hall of Fame, Mr. Dow Green, amongst many great players that went to that school. Gene Upshaw was selected in the 1967 AFL Draft in the first round with the 17th pick by the Oakland Raiders. He played his entire career with Oakland from 1967 to 81. He played in 217 games, started 207 of those, and appeared in three Super Bowls. Super Bowl II, where they lost to the Green Bay Packers. Super Bowl XI, where they beat the Oakland Raiders. I mean, shoot, where they beat the Minnesota Vikings. I don't think they beat themselves. They beat the Minnesota Vikings in eleven, and in Super Bowl XV, where they beat the Philadelphia Eagles. He was the first player to play in th three Super Bowls in three different decades. In the 60s, with Super Bowl II, 70s, with Super Bowl XI, and the 80s, with Super Bowl XV. He also played in three AFL championship games. He was a two-time Super Bowl champ, as I just mentioned, and six-time Pro Bowler, made the NFL's 1970s All-Decade team, won the AFL championship in 1967 before the Raiders lost to the Packers in the Super Bowl. He was an AFL All-Star in 1968, made the NFL's 75th and 100th anniversary all-time team. Now, the 1976 Raiders line was excellent. Upshaw. Art Shell, a Hall of Famer, the late Dave Dalby at center, George Bueller is right guard. They pummeled the Minnesota Vikings in Super Bowl XI. Sorry, Vikings fans. The Raiders rushed for 266 yards, 180 passing yards in that game. Gene Upshaw dominated Alan Page in that game. Just dominated him. Mr. Upshaw afterwards was also president of the NFL Players Association for many years. He played in some of the biggest notable games in football history. The first he played in was the Heidi game against the New York Jets, where NBC cut the game. They cut it out so they could show Heidi in its entirety. And people called and flooded the New York uh, switchboard of NBC, and that never happened again. That's why you see games run late. Well, TV starts late after that. He also played in the Immaculate Reception game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that game, Pittsburgh wasn't going to lose. That ball could have hit the ground, could have hit 10 players. The refs were not going to change it. Those fans would have killed him. He also played in the Sea of Hands game against the Miami Dolphins. He was also in the game, the Ghost to the Post against the Baltimore Colts. The Holy Roller against the San Diego Chargers, where they basically kicked the ball in the end zone. And Red Right 88, sorry Cleveland Browns fans. Uh, when Sam Ritigliano went for the touchdown instead of the field goal, and he did that because Don C Cockroft missed two extra points. That's why it was a, uh, you know, decision like that. He's a member of the Bay Area Sports Hall of Fame and the Football Hall of Fame, one of the greatest linemen ever. He, used to, he and Shell used to tape up their forearms 
after they were inspected by the refs, and people always said they had something under it, but great pickup. I was glad to get that. Second postcard I got through purchase to add to the collection is this gentleman, Mr. Bob Lilly, Robert Lewis Lilly, better known as Bob or Mr. Cowboy, born July 26, 1939 in Olney, Texas. Two Texans in a row here. He's 81. However, his family moved to Oregon his uh, senior year in high school because there were jobs for his parents there. So they left Texas, and he graduated from Pendleton High School in Oregon. He played football there, basketball, and even was the state javelin champ in uh, sports for Oregon High School there. So that was really good. He attended Texas Christian University, TCU. He was an All-American in 1960, two-time All-Southwest Conference. In the 1961 NFL Draft, he was picked in the first round with the 13th pick by the Dallas Cowboys. Also happened to be the first draft pick in Dallas Cowboy history. That year, he was selected in the AFL Draft in the second round with the 14th pick by the Dallas Texans, who eventually became, yes, the Kansas City Chiefs. He played for the Cowboys his entire career from 1961 to 74. He played in two Super Bowls, Super Bowl V, where they lost to the uh, the Colts on a last-second field goal by Jim O'Brien. I have something out to him, so hopefully he'll respond. And he famously threw up his helmet in the air after the loss. And in Super Bowl VI, the next year where they beat the Miami Dolphins, he holds a NFL and Super Bowl record from Super Bowl VI. He sacked Bob Greasy. The sack was a 29-yard loss. So I don't think you'll ever see a quarterback get sacked that, much, that far again. He was an 11-time Pro Bowler, made the NFL's 1960s and 70s All-Decade team, made the NFL's 75th and 100th anniversary All-Time teams, is a member of the Dallas Cowboys Ring of Honor, the College Football Hall of Fame, and the Football Hall of Fame. He played 196 games and had one interception. After his career, he operated a beer distribution business until 1982. That's because he saw the impact of a traffic accident that was caused by drunk driving. And that was it for him. He decided to sell his business and launch his landscaping photography career. So, Bob Lilly, Mr. Cowboy, I was glad to get this to add to the uh, the collection. And now the first TTM I got in the mail came all the way from Missouri. This took 10 days. There was no fee for uh, this particular one. It was also a postcard. HOF postcard, and this one is from Mr. Jackie Smith, Hall of Fame tight end. He signed it, it's a pen there, but put his name, number, and HOF on there. So thank you, Mr. Smith. Jackie, S- Jackie Smith. Jackie LaRue Smith, his middle name. Born February 1940 in Columbia, Mississippi, 80 years old. He attended Kentwood Louisiana High School, where he played clarinet in the school band. That's where he started. Eventually, he played football, track and field. He ran the mile relay, quarter mile, the low and the high hurdles, and was the state champ in Louisiana in the hurdles. He attended Northwest Louisiana State College, which is now Northwestern State. The school could only offer him half a scholarship for track unless he agreed to play football be on the football team. Jackie said, they told me if you go out for football and don't quit, we can give you a full scholarship. He said, I didn't have to play, I just didn't have to quit. So that's how his football career in college got started. In the 1963 NFL Draft, he was selected in the 10th round with the 129th pick by the St. Louis Cardinals. He originally was going to play flanker for the, uh, the Cardinals, but after their starting tight end, I love this first name, Taz. Taz Anderson was injured. He became tight end. He played his career in St. Louis from 1963 to 77, and in one season went to Dallas Cowboys in 1978. In his career, he was a five-time Pro Bowler, had 210 games he played in, 480 receptions, 7,918 yards, 40 touchdowns, Played in one Super Bowl, Super Bowl XII, with the Cowboys, where they lost to the Steelers. Now, it was 1978, and Dallas tight end Jay Saldy uh, fractured his arm in the fourth game of the season against, yes, St. Louis. But Jackie was retired at that point, 
And head coach Tom Landry called him on the Monday, right after the game, and said he asked him to come out of retirement. Now, he played for the Cowboys, but he was only used as a blocking tight end in goal line formations. He didn't get a single catch or a single start the rest of the season. But he did play in the Super Bowl. Super Bowl uh, 12, excuse me, 13. Super Bowl 13, January 1979, in the Orange Bowl. It was the third quarter. Roger Staubach, they were down 21-14 to Pittsburgh, uh, threw a pass in the end zone to a wide-open Jackie Smith, and on the third down pass, he dropped it. They had to settle for a field goal. They eventually lost the game 35-31. to Roger Staubach always said after that, that was a terrible pass. I threw a poor pass. But that's one of the pe- things people remember about Jackie Smith. Sadly, over his Hall of Fame career was that dropped uh, pass. I was a little kid, and I remember that game, and couldn't let it wide open, and he dropped it. But I appreciate him signing this card. Very nice again. It was uh, no fee. It was out in Missouri. Next one is a TTM that came in from Providence, Rhode Island. At least it's postmarked from there, uh, although I sent it to Massachusetts. I finally joined the club. Yes, the club to get this guy. I think I'm the last person who sends out TTMs to get him, and that's Mr. Greg Gagney. Yeah, it took me a while. <laughs> I got him. Everybody else got him, so I figured, well, why not? Let's scoot him on over so we can see all three. Got him on two upper decks and a Donruss. Got a glare there. Let me get that going. All right, well, sorry for the glare on this uh, Donruss card. Oh, that's worse. All right, push him back. Okay. Sorry about that. Greg Carpenter Gagney. Greg. Born in November 1961 in Fall River, Massachusetts. Yes, it's the same hometown as the infamous Lizzie Borden. You don't know who that is? Look it up. She's infamous. 58 years old, a shortstop. And he was drafted in the 1979 Major League Draft by the New York Yankees. Yes, the Yankees. Signed him, drafted him in the fifth round. He spent three seasons in the Yankees minor league system. And on April 10th, 1982, was traded to the Minnesota Twins with pitcher Paul Boris, reliever Ron Davis, good reliever, for shortstop Roy Smalley. That's what the Yankees got. He played in uh, the major leagues from 1983 to 1987. He had a 254 career average, 111 homers, and 604 RBIs. He played for the Twins most of his career, then the Royals, and finished up with the Dodgers. He won two World Series with the, uh, the Royals, 1987 and 1991. It was on October 4th, 1986, he tied a Major League Baseball record, hitting two inside-the-park home runs in the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome, the Homer Dome, with the hefty bag on the outfield there, that uh, outfield wall he had, against the Chicago White Sox. He hit both of those off Floyd Bannister. He's a member of the, uh, the Twins Hall of Fame, and, after his playing career was over, was the head coach at Bishop Feehan High School in Attleboro, Massachusetts. So again, um, this was seven days. There was no fee. Greg Gagney, I finally got him, so I joined the club of people who got Greg Gagney. Took me a while, but I got one. <laughs> finally got him. And now this next one is an 8 by 10 This took nine days. There was no fee. Came back from Pennsylvania. And that's former Major League pitcher Tommy Green. Now, I had this uh, scorecard from 92 blown up. This is the no-hit club card. I thought it looked good for him to sign it. I didn't see too many photos out there of him. So I asked him to inscribe uh, 1993 NL Champs, which he did right here. So thank you, Mr. Green, for that. Ira Thomas Green. Tommy, as he's known, born in April 1967 in Lumberton, North Carolina. 53 years old, attended Whiteville High School in North Carolina, where he won a state championship playing baseball, tossed nine no-hitters in his high school career. So that's quite a feat. Played in the major leagues from 1989 to 1997, won 38 games, had a 4.14 ERA and 461 strikeouts. Started out with the Atlanta Braves, then wound up going to Philadelphia, where he played most of his career and finished with one season trying to play for the Houston Astros. Had a lot of shoulder problems, and it cut his career short. 
1991, he's very famous for throwing a no-hitter on May 23rd against the Montreal Expos, where he struck out 10 and walked 7. That was actually his second start that season and only his 15th Major League start. He was a member of the 1993 National League champion Philadelphia Phillies, went 16-4 and that year, tied Kurt Schilling for the most wins with the Phillies that year, and pitched in the World Series. But again, shoulder problems derailed his career. Really could never recover from that. But again, nice. I had the card blown up. Just a few bucks on Snapfish there. And I asked him to sign 1993 NL Champs, which he did. So thank you, Mr. Green. And the last one is also an 8x10. It's of a 1976 Topps football card that I had blown up. And that's running back John Keyworth, Denver Broncos. Came eight days. It took no fee. He lives in Idaho. He was a running back, as, we, as I said. Jonathan Kimball Keyworth, John, born December 1950 in San Diego, California, 69 years old, attended the University of Colorado in the 1974 NFL Draft, was picked in the sixth round, 144th pick by Washington, Washington Redskins. Never played for them, played for Denver from 1974 to 80. In 95 games, had 2,653 yards and 25 touchdowns. He was a member of the 1977 AFC champions. They upset the Raiders, the defending Super Bowl champs, in the title game and got pummeled by Dallas in the Super Bowl that year. But I asked him to uh, put 1977 AFC champs, which he did. Appreciate that, Mr. Keyworth. It was very nice of him to uh, do that. And again, no fee. It was out in Idaho. And the last one of the day, save the baseball for last. And this came from Pennsylvania. It took eight days. I contributed $10 because it's a ball, and let me take the cover off here, get a better look at it, and that is of Mr. Steve Blass, take it out, he signed the ball for me, great Pittsburgh Pirate pitcher, pull it back a little, I had him, uh, and asked him to inscribe on the ball, 1971, World Series champs, and 1972 NL All-Star, which he did. I appreciate that. Stephen Robert Blass. Steve, as he's known, born April 1942 in Canaan, Connecticut. 78 years old. Was signed by the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1960. Made his Major League debut at the age of 22 on May 10, 1964. Played with the Pirates his whole career from 1964 to 74. Won 103 games. Had a 3.63 ERA, 896 strikeouts. He was a great pitcher until 1973, when it seemed everything went out of control. He lost his control, and he really struggled uh, after that. It's called Steve Blast disease, is what a lot of people call it. But he was a great pitcher up until then. He had 19 wins in 1972, which was a career high. He was the runner-up to the for the Cy Young Award to Steve Carlton. And I can't argue with that. Steve Carlton had 27 wins that year for the Phillies. Phillies only won a total of 59 games, so you can do the math on that one. He was a 1972 All-Star, as I asked him to inscribe on the um, ball. And World Series winner in 1971, he was runner-up for the World Series MVP to Roberto Clemente, who did everything but pitch in that World Series. I think he probably could have. He... um, in that World Series, threw two complete games against the Orioles, gave up seven hits and two runs in 18 innings, and was the winning pitcher in Game 7. Also, he's the last National League pitcher to throw a complete game in Game 7 of a World Series. So, the way they use pitchers now, I don't think we're going to see that. When Steve Blast disease, as it's known, put that in quotes, uh, after the 72 season, in 1973, his ERA ballooned to 9.55, he had 84 walks in just 88 and two-thirds innings and struck out only 27 batters. But before that, he was a great pitcher. He helped the Pirates to win four division NL East titles in five years from 1970 to 74. He, his career is over. He joined the Pittsburgh Pirates broadcasting team in 1983 and stayed there until 2019 when he officially retired after 60 years with the Pirates organization. He's a member of the Pirates Hall of Fame as well. And again... This was uh, seven days, and I did contribute $10 because I like to contribute at least something to get the ball signed, $5, $10. And 
figure two inscriptions, so that's at least, you know, ten bucks. He gets a lot of mail. He's a good TTMer. And, oops, trying to get the cover back on. I'll just save that. So that's it for today. Finally got some mail. I appreciate everybody watching. Sorry for the length of the video. Again, if anybody needs uh, any addresses or anything, you know, my email will be on the uh, description, you know. Let me know if I can help out in any way. I just want to help folks out. It's just for fun, so why not? And I want to say be safe to everybody. Thanks for watching, and good night, Tennessee.